forth your heart and take it in the name of Jesus. Now, let's look at Colossians chapter 1 very quickly. Mm. Please be very attentive. We are going to say teaching meeting so that we can take full cognizance and full delivery. Colossians 1 and um, verse 12. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified and made us, sit, made us fit to share the portion which is the inheritance of the saints. God's holy people in the light. Is that in your Bible? Come on, say, I'm qualified. Please, be, be, be responsive. Because we are not just talking, we are taking delivery. Is that okay? Come on, say, I am qualified. I, am qualified. I have been qualified. Have been qualified. Amen. Amen. Mm. He said, giving thanks to the Father. Say, I thank you, Father, for qualifying me. He said, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified and made us fit to share the portion which is the inheritance of the saints. Say, come on, say, I have inheritance. I, have I am a saint, a saint. In, the in the light. So I deserve I am entitled to my inheritance. I share of the inheritance of the saints that are in the light. I am in the light, so I take and I share of the inheritance that belongs to me. What is this inheritance? See what it says here. The next verse says, The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself. He thanked the father in verse 12. Is, did you see that in your Bible? So the next verse is telling you what is giving thanks to the father for. You wait for God to pay your house rent before you give thanks. But see what you should give thanks for. Giving thanks to the father in verse 12. For what? Verse 13. What did the father do? The father has, come and say has, not will. Is that okay? The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. We want, do you have reason to give thanks to the Father? Yes, Why? The Father has drawn us first to himself, not just delivered. What did he do first? He drew you to himself. Because you cannot be with him and be afraid of the enemy. You cannot also be with him and the devil dare challenge you. The father has drawn you. Come on, say drawn me. Drawn me. The father has delivered and drawn us to himself. Out of the control and dominion of darkness. Not just dominion, even the control. So, the first thing that is your inheritance in Christ. Number one, what is it? Deliverance. Come on, say deliverance. deliverance. Say it again. Deliverance. When did it happen? After you pray. When they lay hands on you. You are delivered when I pray deliverance prayer on you. The Father has delivered you. Giving thanks to the Father for qualifying you. The word qualify simply means you were not qualified. Is that okay? It was not your, you cannot say this is your due. You are not worthy to be delivered. You are not qualified to be delivered. But Paul said, giving thanks to the Father who has delivered us and has drawn us to himself away from the control and dominion of the kingdom of darkness. Not just that, and transfer, because you can deliver and let the person be there. And he will be entangled again. Is that okay? So what did he do? He transferred you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love. That is where his heart is. Where his secret place is. 
That's where he put you. Come on, say, I'm delivered. I'm delivered. Say, I'm delivered. I'm delivered. So, he has, drawn, he has delivered us and has drawn us to himself away from the control and dominion of the kingdom of darkness and has transferred you to the kingdom of his dear son. So, which means you were somewhere before, you are not anywhere there, there, there anymore. You are now somewhere else entirely. That's why I used to say, if you understand where, where you are, you can't even pray some prayers. That last part is very critical. Transferred you. Transferred you away from the control and influence and control and dominion. And transferred you into another place. It's like a person leaves Nigeria and goes to the U.S. There are some people who are rich who just came from abroad and they just felt they should relocate their, their mother. Is that okay? This light they take in this country is too much. See how your skin is. Because he came from abroad and saw that there was no life for two days. The gen noise was so on. He said, what kind of life is this? And I'm living in America. And everywhere, no, everywhere is nice and beautiful. My mother is here. Even if he has sent money to her to deliver her before. But how much can you deliver the person from such level? If you deliver him from light, what about noise of generator? So that small joint is called I passed my neighbor. <laughs> and the neighbor, the way you pass, will rise against you. <laughs> so, hey, so you want to tell me, say, you're picking there abroad. Let me quit get generator. Our ear and go rest again. They will not turn to witches and knock the engine. <laughs> now, so even with money, it's not truly delivered. So the, the son says, now, mommy, get up. You will leave this place for them. Because even if you are here, their control and their influence is still here. So he relocated the woman back to America. And then why is in America? He can't remember what was here. Because he is in another kingdom entirely. You must understand, as in Christ... You are in a different kingdom completely. Very different. Very different. Nothing like where you are coming out from. Which means something. You must speak the language of this kingdom. You must understand the, the identity of this kingdom. You must understand the thinking process of this kingdom. You must know who you are, where you are right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I made a humorous remark that you cannot go to America, go to London, for instance, and then a Nigerian policeman will arrest you. Now, the beauty about this is this. Demons operating always, always have territorial authorities. An ancestral demon of your village has no power to arrest you in the kingdom of Christ. Just like a Nigerian policeman cannot arrest somebody in Nigeria in America. So the issue is not whether you have done it or not. The issue is jurisdiction. It's jurisdiction. Some cases in court, they are struck out, not for merit, but for jurisdiction. Say, no, 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 I cannot answer this case because I have no jurisdiction over this matter. That means I cannot preside over this case. I don't have the power to preside over this matter. So in Christ, no demon has jurisdiction over you. That's what it means. That's the power of the transfer. In Christ, no, no ancestral power has jurisdiction over you. Disease has no jurisdiction. When you come out of Christ, it has jurisdiction. But as long as you are here, you have no jurisdiction. Come on, say, today, I confirm, I establish myself and my destiny in Christ. And I declare that the enemy, the devil, witches, wizards, marine powers, ancestral powers, have no jurisdiction over my life, my property, my children, my inheritance. I have been delivered from their kingdom and transferred to this new kingdom and they have no jurisdiction. Satan, you know it. 
and I know it that you have no jurisdiction over my life. I deny you jurisdiction. I deny you access. I deny you utterance over me. Whatever you prophesy on your altars have no jurisdiction over me. Set up altars. They will not have jurisdiction over me. Gather whatever you like. It will have no jurisdiction over me. It's your understanding of who you are or who God is in you. That's why gospel says be established in righteousness. Then oppression shall be far from you. Be established in Christ who is our righteousness. Then oppression shall be far from you. Is that okay? He still came. If that be, come on, let's do that not true. Now you see, and I say it not be true. So that you are like so does not mean he won't come. He will still come. But declare what you know. It's not a time to be fighting and be afraid. No, declare what establish yourself in righteousness. Say, Satan, I am a son. I don't need to prove it to you. I don't need to prove it to you. Proving it means you are not even sure. Even you want to be sure by proving it. No, 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 no. Satan, I can't prove that to you. I don't owe you, I don't owe you anything. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the way it works. So you wake up and say no because people are too afraid of issues. You just so Jesus said to Satan, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Three times he came. Stop on boy. Three times he came. Stop on boy. Even with the Christ himself, how much more you? If you came three times in Christ, you know you can come 20 times in you. The same matter, you go Christ said, this thing not be true. You can't be rich in this town. You tell him, Satan, I'm already rich. I'm already rich. I won't pray about it. I'm already rich. And then you say, why? You say, because I know the grace of our Lord Jesus. That even though he was poor, he became rich. That through his poverty, I may be rich. Satan, get, get out of here. And he says, Satan comes again. Bah, 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 bah. He said, This sickness, it killed three people in Malaysia. You are dying. He said, No, I cannot die. I have died before. I can't die again. So, even when he has delivered you from that kingdom into this kingdom, you must know how to say it back. Know it and say it from the control and influence and dominion of the kingdom of darkness. No demon has jurisdiction over you, but he may have, he may, he may attack you because he is a stubborn animal. He may attack you, a man that could lead revolt against God. You, you understand a man that could read a, lead a rebellion against God in heaven will not be afraid to attack you. He attacked God himself. So the issue is this, but they overcame him. If they overcame, you will overcome. Amen. But first of all, know what you received in Christ first. Because that's what he wants to challenge. That's why I gave you evil dream. That's why that dream is there. That's why issues are happening around you. If you don't know how to interpret the issues well, you will miss it. You will be thinking it's not working. It's not working. No, 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 don't say it. Don't think so. Satan also knows about you. He knows things are not working out the way you want. He knows. He has been looking at you. Satan has eyes. He sees. I saw in Job that when God called the sons of God, who came also? The devil also came. And I will show you a, a mystery later, maybe next week, that the same place where blessings are, that's where, that's where the devil is. Is that okay? So he knows you. He knows what you are going. He knows that your your wife has an issue with you. So he will start from there. He knows that your office has some problems. He will start from there. He knows your marriage is somehow. He will start from there. He started from where Christ was. He was hungry after forty days. This man don't hunger, don't wire around. There are things you have gone through in life, and you are wondering. He knows what you have gone through. 
He knows the many years of stagnation. He knows many years things are not working the way you, the, you want them to work. He's aware that in your father's house, people don't rise and win. And it's appearing that you were like that now. He knows. He has familiar demons everywhere who give report to him on the state of affairs of your family. And things will be appearing as though this thing that happened to your uncle and your brother is also happening now to force you away from Christ and bring, lure you out. A man is tempted when he's lured out. Satan used words to lure Eve and Adam out of the garden. He not touch them, not talk, he talk. Just talk. Because they didn't know what to say back. Because they did not even know what happened. God just made Adam and dropped him there. And gave him instruction. That's why I fear law. Grace is better. Because grace comes with truth. You can't say you are in grace and you don't have truth. Because grace and truth are one person. So people who operate in grace are men of truth. If you claim to be a grace man, you must be a truth man. So you must understand the platform on which you are. Completely and thoroughly. Don't say you are in grace and you don't know what grace means. Don't say you are in grace and you don't have the truth that backs up grace. Jesus was grace and truth. So when the devil came, he gave him truth. Man shall not live by bread alone. I know I am hungry now. And I know that you know that I'm hungry. But man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God does man live. And the man said, ah, ah. Bless this man, no. Then he came again. Took him. Don't say take him. He took Jesus. Not, he, 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 he not carried, took. And showed him all those things. And then he spoke again. And again, it is written. Three times this man came, persevered. Jesus also fired back three times. When he came the fourth time, he said, Satan is enough. Get the hands. And shouted at him. There are some areas when you see things are happening and they don't look like they are working well. And you are having the devil suggesting this man, you, you say the word. And it still happens again. You say the word. And then it happens again. Say the word. The next time, shout at it. Like Jesus did. Is that okay? That's a man of understanding. A man of understanding. He knows who he is. Somebody says you are a man. I suppose he said you are a woman. Say, ah, ah. I'm a man now. He said, no, you are a woman. Ah, ah. I'm a man. He said, no, you are a woman. I'm a man. You are a woman. You will slap him next Are you mad? Do not be thinking, ah, ah. Am I a woman, really? Yes, because he you knows when you think because the warfare is in the mind. Yes, that's, it. that's where the war is. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exhorts itself against the knowledge of God. You cast them down. Satan fights from there. There's no witch anywhere. It is your perception of the oppression of witchcraft that makes becomes witchcraft oppression. So, I have been delivered and transferred. That's important. I was not delivered and left there. I was delivered and transferred. I was relocated. So that jurisdiction will break. You cannot have in, be in that place and not understand jurisdiction. And still begin to think that it is possible that these things are the reason why I'm like this. No. Even if they were, you, you have what to do. You speak God's word and then you put the devil, you resist the devil. Then he will walk away. No, he will flee. Resist the devil, then he will flee. Is that okay? Come on, say I hear. Come on, say I hear. Come on, say I hear. In Colossians 3, verse 13. Galatians 3, verse 13, please. Oh, glory to God. Christ redeemed us from the cost of the law. Is that true? Yeah. 
having become a cause for us. For it is written, cost is everyone who hangs on a tree. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, if you read that scripture, we have read earlier, in um, Colossians 1 verse 12, you will realize that the inheritance he's talking about was not complete yet. You said, you see, he said, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us, then he said he has delivered us. And then verse 14 says, in whom we have our redemption through his blood. Is that in your Bible? In whom we have. Did you notice the word our in the amplified? Come on, say our. My redemption. Uh -huh. It's like a key. My redemption. My redemption. In whom we have our redemption. So after deliverance, what other thing is in Christ? How many of you are delivered in Christ? You know why you are delivered in Christ? Okay, that in whom we have redemption. Redem what is redemption? Redemption means to buy back. Is that okay? So we were, you were somewhere where you were sold. It's like Gigi market. You know Gigi? Where they sell second hand things. Market. And TV is there. And then somebody sold the TV to the person who is selling it now. That's how it is. That's market. That's business. The man selling is not the one who, who, who produced it. They sold to him. Is that okay? So when Satan was talking, he said, he told Jesus, this kingdom to be delivered to me. I buy him. I buy him. Not freely. He buy. Is that okay? So he said it were delivered to, to him. So he bought it. And including man. So what Jesus did was to buy back. Not buy. Buy back. Which means they bought it before. Is that okay? And so he has come to buy it back. Have you have watched a film where somebody stole a painting from his somebody from his house and the person who stole the painting sold it to somebody his own painting no so why he was looking for painting to buy again he saw his own painting on the market ah see my painting and the man said you can't say that i bought it if you want it buy it back He had to buy his own thing back. Say, how much did they sell my thing? So he brought it back. Praise God. If he wants it in his house. Jesus came to the market and bought us back. The beauty about this is this. You shout redemption, redemption. No, don't just say it without what I want to say now. The power of redemption is this. It's not just the fact of redemption that is the issue. Anybody can buy anything back. Remember that if I buy something back, I can buy it again from you with a higher price. Is that okay? If that man who wanted to buy his own painting put $10,000 to buy it back, and somebody else said, I'll give you, give that seller $30,000, he won't give it to the owner. Is it not true? He will not. So the issue of our redemption is not just the redemption itself. It is the fact that the price that was used to buy it back waiting them pay for this thing is the thing that is critical. So Peter was speaking in anger. Say you must know that you were redeemed not with corruptible things but with incorruptible you were redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. So think about it. You not be passing away the feet deliver. Then the ego comes still the entangled dog come buy him again. No! That's the meaning of redemption. That's the power of this our own. That's why I show you understand our they put there. Our redemption. It's not like other redemption. 
notice our own redemption, a special one. Why? Because of how much they take by us back. And I be the team. And so Peter said, you must know, First Peter 1 verse 18, that you were not redeemed with, with corruptible things. You understand how much was used to redeem you? Understand it, sir? So you don't joke with yourself. So you don't belittle yourself. You don't chip in yourself. That's why. Let me read it to you. It's a beautiful verse. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Peter, we have chapter one. Amen. First Peter, chapter one, please. Verse um, eighteen. He said, "You must know, recognize that you were redeemed." from the useless way of living inherited by your tradition from your forefathers not with corruptible things like silver and gold that somebody else may have much or more than you have is that okay you must know that amen but you were purchased with the precious blood of christ like that of a sacrificial lamb without blemish or spot so you must know it recognize it understand this is the reason this is how you were bought back the price they used to buy you back nobody feel, nobody can surpass it if it was surpassable deliverance would be short-lived then many of us will be back to the market when they say satan will just get angry and say um stevie come back Stevie will say i'm not going back say how much they pay for everybody who, who, how much? You just add money join. <laughs> they paid Stephen $200,000. Okay, I'll give the man two fifty. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So before you know, Stephen is back in the market. It's also, but you must recognize the terms of your redemption. If you don't recognize those terms, you will chip in yourself before the devil. You will talk useless things from your mouth. A man who does not know his value never thinks highly of himself. Everything is thinks is against him. Everything can is bigger than him. Everything is strong. Look at those men, those men in numbers who said they were in the eyes of their enemies like grasshoppers. They didn't have any sense of value. How can you call your whole a whole man like a grasshopper? Of all the animals in the world, now grasshopper, now you choose. We didn't say I'm looking like a rat. Grasshopper. They, that they will just match. God was so angry and God consumed them. How, how did you choose grasshopper? You, that sons of a whole nation died to release. Imagine the price that was paid for Israel to leave Egypt. Yeah. And somebody said they are like grasshoppers. Okay, just imagine even that one, Egypt, just now people blood, not precious blood. An enemy's blood is not a, but his blood all the same. People waiting. Uh, sorry. Can you imagine that army that 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 sank in the river to let this man leave Egypt, and he's now saying, "It's like a grasshopper." That's why God said, "These people that talk like this, no one will smell the Canaan. Their children will not smell it." And all of them, 600,000 people perished. So you can even be redeemed from Egypt and not understand your redemption and still perish. So you see, people who are believers, they still suffer. Believers, they still struggle. Believers are going through things because they don't even understand what happened to them. So Paul Peter said, you must know before you lose your mouth and run your mouth anyhow before you allow things that you are going through make you talk anyhow know where you are coming from oh. know how much 